Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to my channel. This is going to be a pick a card reading on what are your psychic powers. And I'm actually going to talk a little bit about what I mean by that and why I'm even doing this video in the first place. But if you want to skip listening to me talk and go right to your reading, go ahead and pick a card. It's number one, two, three, and number four. As always, the links are in the description box. As for why I'm making this video, I'm basically developing a bit of a pet peeve because I'm seeing this idea floating around the internet that seems to be saying or implying that empaths, and empaths are just people who kind of sense other people's energy and interpret that through their feelings, you know, feeling other people's feelings, are somehow more psychic or more intuitive or more sensitive or even more evolved than other kinds of people. And that's really, <laughs> really, really misleading. And it's, like I said, I'm developing a, developing a pet peeve here because I hear things like, water signs are the most psychic, you know, cancers are the most intuitive and blah, 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 or that, you know, earth signs aren't very psychic. They're not in touch with their intuition because they're so grounded. And that's just a bunch of bullshit because there's all of these different ways we can sense energies, either, you know, with our vision, with our hearing, with our thoughts, you know, claircognizance, or through your feelings as an empath or actually sensing it physically. Um, and this reading is to actually help you figure out how you are sensing and interpreting energies. And to me, any way that you're sensing and bringing in those energies, that's all <laughs> equally intuitive. It's just a different way of perceiving and processing it. Um, let me use the example of imagine you walk into a room full of people. Now, everybody walking into the room is going to sense the energy in that room differently. Somebody who's really empathic. And here's the thing, there's even there's lots of different types of empaths, but nobody really talks about that. Kind of the classic case of an empath, they would walk into a room and kind of hit on each individual and can feel how that person is feeling and can feel those emotions coming from them. Um, but the empath doesn't get those emotions confused with their own. They can clearly feel that like, oh, I'm feeling that person's stress or I'm feeling that person's anxiety or fear, whatever they're feeling, they can feel that it's that person's. The other type of empath is the, the person who sort of is picking up on the ambient energy of the room you know, whether that's excitement, if you're at like, you know, a sporting event and it's like the big game and everyone's so amped and that, that empath gets amped, even if they didn't actually care about the game before they walked in or they walk into a stressed out business meeting and suddenly they're stressed out. They're picking up on all of those uh, ambient energies and empathically feeling it, but they're confusing those feelings as their own. And that is what I have struggled with a lot through my life. <laughs> so I, I know a lot about that. Uh, those kind of empaths don't can't differentiate between their, their own feelings and the feelings of others. Um, but of course, you can be picking up on these energies and being just as psychic or just as intuitive, whichever way you want to look at it, as those empaths, even if you don't really feel anything. Like, experiencing emotions is not the only way to be intuitive. You can walk into the room and see auras, seeing people's auras or just seeing flows of energies. Or you could walk into the room and... Maybe you're having a telepathic conversation with their guides and they're like telling you about what's going on or you're hearing music in your head that is like matching the mood of the room. Um, maybe you're even hearing impressions of other people's thoughts. Um, and then there's just, you know, like a straight claircognizant like download um, where you're just knowing things about the room. You know, you, you just know, you can just sense it. Um, you can kind of tell what's been happening in the room and claircognizance is really hard to describe because it's just that knowing. You just know. You don't know how you know. You just know. Um, and then there's, you could also be sensing everything through, almost like through your body, right? Some people get like a gut instinct. It's almost like that claircognizant download, but you feel it in your gut, like, <laughs> you know, just deep down, maybe your stomach is churning a little bit, but you know what's up in your, in your stomach, right? Uh, other people feel... Uh, energy like almost like electricity on their skin other people might feel you know we've all had the hairs on the back of our neck stand up we've all had shivers and chills it goes way beyond that you know way beyond tingles you can be literally feeling electric currents run through your body like through your left hand up your arm all the way down to your other hand or up and down your spine um, even in your feet you can be feeling that very very viscerally and of course some people even smell things, taste things. Um, you could be having 
memories is this is just like scratching the surface of all the different ways you could be experiencing that energy my point is that there's a whole vast amount of ways to be intuitive or to be psychic and it doesn't have to be this empathic experience um, of course most people are going to have a little bit of a mix and you don't need to limit yourself to like one thing right at one point in your life you could be really clairvoyant and then you could be more empathic and then maybe you just become more of a straight claircognizant download um, it could be different on different days all kinds of different things there is no like there aren't really any rules here you get to decide you know how intuitive you are and how you experience those energies because all of these different things your thoughts your feelings your sight your hearing your taste your smell your memories all of those are just different senses that you use to sense energy and then experience it inside your consciousness so don't let anybody tell you that <laughs> you are more or less intuitive or psychic than anybody else. Um, we can all develop these different abilities, although some of us, most of us tend to be more skilled in some areas than others, just like anything else, right? Some of us are better soccer players. Some people are better at writing uh, stories and other people are better at musical instruments and other people are better at playing sports. But we all have some ability to learn each of those things a little bit, right? <laughs> um, Okay, I think that's the end of my rant. If anybody um, stuck through that, I'd like to finally move on to the reading to see how you guys are picking up energies and experiencing it and what your psychic powers are. I'll see you in your reading. Okay, pile number one, welcome to your reading. You guys are basically that classic textbook style empath that I'd mentioned. And I hope if you listen to the blurb uh, at the beginning of this video, I hope you guys didn't get the impression that I was like taking a crap on empaths because that wasn't wasn't the point of this at all. I just wanted to make sure that people were aware of the fact that that is not the only type to be. It's not like there's anything wrong with being that classic type of empath. And what I mean by that, like classic empath, is people who sense other people's feelings and don't really get confused about whose feelings those are. I don't think that you guys are sensing other people's feelings, taking them in and then thinking like, um, oh, you know, I'm having a bad day. Well, you guys are probably pretty aware that it was that other person having a really bad day, but you feel their bad day, but you have good boundaries and like barriers in place. So you don't get um, subsumed. And I'm seeing this because the queen of cups and the king of cups, right? <laughs> those are like, two of the most intuitive people in this entire deck. And it's like an extroverting energy, like the queen of cups. She rides the waves of emotions, um, other people's emotions as well as her own. Um, but she doesn't, you know, she rides the waves. She is surfing and she's really good at it. She doesn't get overwhelmed by other people's emotions. And the king of cups, he's, he's like ruling the emotions. And you got to think about, you know, the masculine perspective on emotions, he knows how to use them. He knows entirely how to use them for everybody's good. It's like he's wheel, he's ruling power in a kingdom, you know, an underwater kingdom where everybody affects everybody else energetically. And he really understands that. Just think about, you know, even if you're just in a pool or you're in a, in a river, right? If, if somebody or anything swims by you, you can feel those ripples go by, right? It's a lot more apparent than if someone walks by you. You can, you know, when someone walks by, you can feel the air shift or hear them or whatever. But when someone swims by you, you feel those water ripples. Um, that's what you guys are picking up on. It's like everybody else is going around emoting and you guys pick up on that so easily. You are so sensitive and so attuned to everybody else's feelings because to you, it's almost like we all, you really f understand how interconnected we all are. You almost feel like, you know, that the space between us, um, it's not empty air to you guys. It's almost like it's water because you can feel the ripples of everybody going around you. But again, that's not, you guys are not like disempowered empaths. You guys you've probably been developing your empathic skills like for lifetimes because you're not in that state of being a victim. You guys aren't empaths being victimized by narcissists or sociopaths or anything. You guys are in your power. You're riding the currents. You're riding the waves. You know how to navigate it. And you know how to use this uh, these skills to 
help people. Maybe you guys are counselors or teachers or um, some kind of, uh, maybe you're even psychics. Um, and if you're not now, you will be in the future. Like you guys can absolutely, you're here to help people um, and you can help them so well because you know how they're feeling, but you don't get some subsumed, some subsumed, subsumed by their feelings. And this is even more beautiful. I haven't talked about it yet. The Ten of Pentacles in the middle here. Wow, because the Ten of Pentacles is... <sighs> I love that it's in, in, the, in the middle of this king, the king and queen here because this is such a firm, firm, grounded foundation um, for you to be kind of riding these waves from. That This is part of what gives you guys your stability um, because you, you, you have this deep, deep groundedness. It's like even though you know, a great part of your consciousness is surfing these waves. You guys have deep, deep roots so that you don't ever get washed away. Uh, but also the Ten of Pentacles is always this energy to me of sharing the wealth. You know, if the Nine of Pentacles is somebody having their own personal luxury and living in, you know, enjoying what they have for themselves, the Ten of Pentacles is where we share that with our family, with, you know, with the village, uh, with the whole community, you guys have something to share and what, you know, you're going to be sharing and you guys can really share your, you know, your abundance. And I don't really mean this in a material way. Uh, although, I mean, it, it could be that, right? Maybe you really love cooking for, you know, big parties of people. Maybe you're even a chef, something like that, you know, really nourishing people's bodies and through that nourishing their souls. Right. Um, but whatever it is that you guys do, you're nourishing people's feelings because you know how they are feeling. And I feel like you guys can navigate other people's emotions so well. And that is going to give you such, such power to make an impact and a difference. So one, like, I, I don't know, minor quibble, I guess that's coming through here. It's, it's not, not a quibble. Um, just, a I guess something that might need to be addressed is maybe you guys sometimes feel like you just want to turn it all off. If you ever feel overwhelmed by this constant like tidal wave after tidal wave of emotions uh and constantly caring for everybody um like this this energy here is so extroverted and i mean i know you guys can handle it but don't be afraid to take care of yourself and to take a time out you know have a bubble bath meditate you know go to the spa whatever it is that you do for like your me time you need to be able to recharge right uh I don't think this is like a big problem for you guys because you're you're so like stable and like good at what you guys do. You're so I, I get such confidence for this, such confidence and such like ca you're so capable and to to be caring to take on everybody else's problems. But you know you you have to look after yourself too. And you know if only because you know you won't be able to help all these other people and do whatever it is you do in your life if you're letting yourself kind of get get sucked dry maybe that's not really a good way of putting it if you get too destabilized you know like if you're getting kind of seasick from riding these waves all the time go take a break you know stand on the shore just get it get it together so that you can you know come back and enjoy another day uh on the beach so to speak right <sighs> let me think i'd like to pull one moonology card for you guys. Let's see. The end of a tough cycle approaches. Wow, full moon in Capricorn. Okay, this is really significant to me because the full moon of Cap in Capricorn, where, when does that happen? That happens in Cancer season, right? And this this Queen of Cups and King of Cups, that that is such, such Cancer energy to me. So, and what I was just saying about uh, taking a break, you know, get out of the waves to make sure you are looking after yourself, that's Capricorn energy, right? Capricorn's... Um, and I, I say this as a Capricorn, I have five planets in Capricorn, so uh, I know Capricorn energy. <laughs> you know, I'm striving to get our head, we are always striving to get our heads above the waves. And um, 
you know, we take care of our own shit first so that then we can help everybody else. So that is definitely a message coming here for, for you guys to not get, to not forget about yourselves. I think that's really what it is. And because uh, Capricorn and Cancer are, you know, being opposite poles, they're, they're always very, very connected. Um, I feel like some of you guys might be North Node in Capricorn, which means your South, <laughs> south Node is in Cancer. Um, and meaning you guys might be, maybe you, you were really afraid to leave like family comforts. Even if your family is just your friends, whatever family is to you, maybe you always wanted to surround yourself with your family and always kind of checking in with everybody, you know, doing everything uh, as a group, getting everybody's input before you make decisions and really being afraid to be entirely like left alone. Um, you know, that's just that cancer south node coming through. And if you are need to go Capricorn, <laughs> Capricorn north node, there's going to be a little bit of a lesson there of, you know, really stepping into your shoes as being an adult. And uh, that's not going to be too difficult for you guys, seeing as you already got the Queen of Cups, the Ten of Pentacles, and the King of Pentacles. But this caption here, the end of a tough cycle approaches. Something is going on. Maybe you guys had to fight long and hard to find this stability of the Ten of Pentacles. And like I mentioned, you guys have been uh, to be the Queen of Cups and the King of Cups. You guys have been cultivating your abilities as an empath for lifetimes, I really think. And this is all coming to a head with this full moon in Capricorn. Um, so I think just the final message here is to really continue to strive for that balance between riding everybody else's emotional waves and looking after your own emotional needs. With your cards here, I don't think that's going to be like a, a significant struggle for you guys, but it might feel uncomfortable or like a little bit of a stretch or doing something unfamiliar that you maybe don't really want to be doing. But deep down, you guys know what you need to do with you guys emotional intelligence. You, you know, <laughs> you know how to ride this out. So just keep going. You guys got this. And just be making sure to strike that balance while you ride the wave. And that's all I'm seeing for you guys. I hope to see you guys again soon. Okay, pile two, welcome to your reading. You guys are the only one that I used four cards for here. Uh, I don't know why I was just really pulled to put a fourth card in here for you guys. And I see why because you guys got three major arcana, temperance, the hanged man, and the world. And in the middle here, we got the six of wands. So this is just really speaking of clear cognizance to me. That's when you're just basically getting downloads like straight in through your crown chakra. And it's just like data. Data is coming in, streaming in from the cosmos. Um, and it leads you to just an inner knowing. Like you just no. Can you guys hear my cat? She has something to say about this. Mishki Poo, do you have anything to say to the to the viewers? She's camera shot. She's right here. There we go. <laughs> Okay, kitty, I got to get back to work. Okay, guys, I'm back. Uh, I guess we just had an infusion of cat magic there. I don't know what that might mean to you guys. I hope you guys like cats. Um, what was I saying before the kitty cat parade? Claire Cognizance, you guys are getting like data streams just straight from the cosmos and it leads you to this, this inner inner knowing. And But I think this is relatively new to you guys because we have temperance paired up with the hanged man so there is so much like cosmic energy coming in and you guys really bring that into you and kind of like mix it up let it stew <laughs> like if you were cooking I'd really imagine that like you guys are kind of like a pot and you know 
the cosmos is putting in all these ingredients inside of you and you're mixing it up and like really like boiling it down into being like 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 a puree <laughs> like a pureed stew or a soup um <laughs> just because you're you're mixing up all of these different ingredients and then you are you come to something completely your own out of all of this different mix like it's not like you know some people are like you know arcturian channels and they just channel arcturian messages and that and then they transmit that and that's what they do and they do that that's great that's fantastic um you guys aren't getting like a message from one place you're getting it from all over the place you know it'd be like the stew the metaphorical stew that we're making here you guys have have ingredients from all over the world and you're making probably like coming up with your own original recipe that uses really weird ingredients that don't typically go together <laughs> and but you're making something delicious and unique and entirely your own and with the hanged man here that tells me that like you guys are currently undergoing this this process of realizing this and even though your whole life you probably always knew things and you were always very confident in your opinions even if your opinions were like completely fucking weird like you know maybe you've cut them up to yourself quite a bit because you just knew that people wouldn't get it and you were probably okay with that i mean we all want validation right we all want to be understood but i feel like you guys were probably you know okay being the lone wolf even if you wanted to fit in even if you wanted to be included and find your tribe you still, you know, manage to thrive in your own way out on your own. And, you know, maybe people have commented that you're like, it's infuriating how you're always right. Or people always come to you for advice, even, you know, even though I don't think you guys are very like social butterflies. There's certain people that are always asking you, like clearing their decisions with you and stuff like that. Maybe even when you were a kid, you would notice that like adults would ask you questions and not not just, you know, adults always ask kids to questions in ways of, of teaching them, but this might be like, maybe your parents didn't know like where to go out for dinner or what to cook for dinner. And they would like ask your opinion and then they'd be like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. And like actually mean it, you know, not just like pandering to a child, but actually meaning it. And then, you know, they would cook what you suggested or they would go out to dinner to like <laughs> where you suggested. And you would always kind of be like, huh, why did they have to ask me? Wasn't it obvious? Wasn't it obvious that that was what we should do? Uh, <laughs> I'm really getting this, but also with this, this hanged hanged man, I mean, it's actually the hanged woman here. You're going through this like transitional phase where this is going to be amping up to a whole new level. Like you've been kind of, you know, operating your whole life with this claircognizance abilities without knowing it. And now you're waking up to that. But right now you're in like you're hanging upside down doing like the Odin trick, right? If you know the story of the hanged man, it's it harkens back to the story of Odin who wanted to gain the knowledge of the runes and he hangs himself upside down in a tree and s sticks a spear in his side and does that for like 10 days and like almost dies or maybe he does die and is brought back. I can't remember. But the point is he has to go through this like uh, he has to hang himself upside down to see things from a new perspective. He has to take a time out from his life and the world uh, in order to like make space for this new wisdom to come in. He has to stab himself with a spear in order to it's that idea that, you know, giving something up, it's the suffering. Like Odin, doesn't he also like pull out his eye in order to learn something? I can't remember. I'm going to have to br brush up on my mythology. <laughs> but you guys can look up this story. It won't be hard to find. Um, and so, you know, after Odin goes through this ordeal, then he's given the knowledge of the runes. And, you know, runes is reading, right? Nunes is pure knowledge, pure transmission of wisdom. And... You guys are going through a period like that where you're having to wait, but really the waiting is like when we're cooking the stew. You guys, your stew is being cooking, <laughs> is being cooked. And this is like moving on to bigger and better things. The Six of Wands is, you know, your moment of victory. You're going to be this woman, you know, with your hands in the air going like, yes, like, you know, I got this. And you're really going to be realizing like coming into your own because this is all followed up with the world. And like, look, does this picture remind you guys of an atom? Can I get this to focus in close on it? Look at that. It is the world in macrocosm and in microcosm. Wow, I, I'm just star staring at this. Um, I hope you guys had a good look. Because I think that uh, that this is where you guys are going, where you guys are going to be coming to like a whole new understanding of 
how the cosmos works, your place within it, and how the microcosm and the macrocosm are one in the same. You know, you are the universe, the universe is inside you. It's all, you know, interconnected rotating spheres is, is a picture I see. If you could imagine this, you know, in 3D, or if you can imagine things in 5D, that would be even better, but I don't know what that would be like. <laughs> I'm not that good at visualizing. So yeah, you guys, Claire Cognizant from all different sources, just in streamings of cosmic energies. Like, wow, as I'm saying this, my uh, the top of my head is tingling. Um, so you guys are getting crown chakra activations. Uh, if you guys have been having like headaches, like in the middle of your forehead or like in the middle of your head, like your pineal gland is in like the middle back-ish of your head. The pitu pituitary gland is kind of in that like third eye position. Um, although this isn't exact, you can look up diagrams if you want to know exactly where they are, but you guys are probably getting like major activations in your crown chakra and your third eye. And that can be giving like third eye headaches or weird pressures in the middle of your head. Um, you might even feel like there's a tiny little pine cone kind of embedded deep in the middle of your head. That's your pineal gland. And you might like feel it throbbing or spinning or glowing, right? Your pineal gland is highly connected to your crown chakra. So you guys might find it useful to listen to sound healing. Um, take a look. The best sound healer I can recommend is Tom Kenyon. I'll try to link, I'll try to link that down below. There's also two uh, musical like organizations that do really, really good sound healing. I mean, you can look up um, stuff on YouTube, you know, tuned to different chakras, but they're not, I mean, it's good. There's nothing wrong to listen to that. But if you want something like really, really high frequency, um, Qualia Plus or Source Vibrations. And I will link those in the description box because you guys might really benefit from just listening to the like crown or crown chakra or pineal gland chakra activations while you sleep or while you meditate or even just in the background while you're, uh, you know, doing housework or studying or whatever. Just don't do it while you're driving. But um, I'll put those links in the description box. You guys will probably get some benefit out of that if that resonates with you at all. And I'm going to leave your reading at that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Hey, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading. Uh, this is, is funny. Your cards actually, when I picked them up, fell all over the floor. And uh, I had to reshuffle them because I didn't, I didn't, I picked them up in this order, but I didn't like that order. So I was like, well, maybe I mess it up when I drop them. And then I, I shuffled just the three cards, shuffled them, shuffled them, and I put them out like this. And of course, they came back up in the exact order that I didn't like in the first place. Um, so this is clearly the way it's meant to be read. And I say didn't like, even though it's, you know, we can't always want the most like positive reading. Otherwise, what would be the point in getting any readings? And I didn't like it because my silly little bias is that I don't like to see the best cards in the beginning. Uh, like the 10 of cups. I wanted to see the 10 of cups at the end because that would mean that that's where you're going. Um, but of course, that is that is a bias that I, I need to get past because we can't always be, you know, <laughs> going to the top of the mountain. And it and it, also the other problem with that view of mine is that or that not so much a view, but that knee jerk reaction is that it really uh, doesn't take into account the fact that having the Ten of Cups in the first position here has its own beauty to it, because that means this is once I looked at this, I got it. I understood why it, the cards had to come out in, in this order, because this crystal here, this is you guys. You're that crystal in the middle. And all of these cups around, they're there. I see them almost as people, but really they're, they're energies. They're points of energy. And look how everything is intersecting in this grid. You guys are the center of the grid. And you're not like working towards becoming this. You're not going here. You're already here. That is why it is actually like, it's so beautiful to see this card in the first position rather than the last position because you've already attained this. This is who you are. You don't have anything. You don't have to do anything more to get here. This is you. Okay. Um, and I haven't mentioned yet what your psychic powers are. <laughs> and let me get to that. Because of the Ten of Cups, because you're the crystal at the center of all this energy, this web of energy, I see you guys as empaths, but not the kind of empath that like experiences other people's emotions and can clearly identify that, oh, you know, 
suddenly I feel this sadness coming at me, but I can clearly tell it's theirs. It's not my own sadness. You guys, I think are really internalizing everything. Cause look at this all. It's like, you're surrounded by all of this energy and it's coming in and filtering in and coming all at you. And for you guys, it can be really hard to, to understand when those feelings are yours and when they're others. And I know how this feels because this is me. <laughs> like, Man, when I was a kid, I had such, such severe, severe, severe social anxiety that I couldn't, like I was like non-functional. Like I couldn't, I couldn't deal at school. Uh, you know, I went to school every single day crying. I was just terrified every moment of every day for my entire life. And <laughs> I just, it took me like well into my twenties to get a grip on that. And now I'm really realizing that I, I always thought of myself as somebody who wasn't very empathic. I was like, I'm not an empath. I'm not empathic at all. I don't have any feelings. I, for a long time, I thought of myself as somebody who has no feelings. Um, and then I realized it was that I was so overwhelmed by like the world's energies, by everybody else's feelings that I like had, I could not fucking deal. And I just shut off. I completely shut down. I was like, I cannot live in a world with this many feelings, with this much emotion. I just have to have no feelings. And I became like a total left brain logic, per like robot person. And that was how I dealt with that. So if you're listening to this and you're going like, I'm not an empath, I'm not emotional at all. Well, look back to the very earliest days of your childhood and look back to any moments in your life when you've been really overwhelmed and see if maybe you are like so psychic, like so intuitive and so empathic that you've actually like shut it off because you couldn't even deal with it. And, you know, and it, it's a polarity, right? Anybody who is like the most emotional and the least emotional, it's a polarity there. And honestly, I really feel like somebody like, like a true psychopath, somebody with the brain structure of a psychopath um, who is like almost entirely incapable of having any pro-social emotions. I feel like those people probably experienced such repeated and severe traumas in their past lives that they have like completely shut off their emotional circuits because that was the only way they had to deal. And, um, and it's not to say that people who are just, you know, unemotional or psychopaths, it's not it at all. Um, you know, psychopaths actually have a separate type of brain structure and they can be identified, um, you know, as children. I mean, not that all children who identified as like, psychopath apprentices become psychopaths. It's not it at all. Um, a psychopathy can't even be diagnosed until 25 until the brain is done. Um, my point is here, like I'm not calling anybody a psychopath. I'm just saying, you know, if you think of yourself as an unemotional person, it might be because you were actually so emotional that you turned it off. That's really, that's the sum total here. And I'm seeing that because we have the devil and the four of swords. So this devil card to me and like, look, it's like a stairway into the mind almost like i can imagine you guys like climbing up this path it's almost like it's coming out of your heart space you were like i couldn't i can't deal i cannot deal with with feeling this many feels all the time being inflicted with the whole world's feelings so you climbed up into your mind and took residence there because that was the only way to get it to all stop that was the only way to turn it all off and you guys are probably feeling like you want to get back in touch with your feelings, with your heart center, with your intuition, um, with your emotional body and with that kind of experience of life. And that is why you're currently into this four of swords, like comatose, like fugue state. I really see this four of swords as a, as a fugue state. It's a healing, like a healing sleep. So if you guys are, I've been like exhausted, like if you feel like Bilbo, like butter spread out over too much bread, it's because you're you're going through like a, you're going through almost like a healing coma. You, you need to just be, you need to be easy on yourselves while you kind of unplug from the world, unplug from everybody else's energies, unplug from everybody else's emotions, and then you can come back into your center state. You know, if you have to do emotional purging, if you have to look at um, you know, coming back to this devil card, if you have to release past traumas, past anxieties, past addictions, compulsive thinking, always the devil is compulsive thinking to me. If you think, 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 think too much, and you guys probably do since you're, you know, 
you've probably relied on your mind, your, your logical mind to cope with all of this onslaught of feelings. And you might need to be releasing some of that. So you guys might have to go through like a period of discomfort, you know, where, you know, maybe your eyes' tears are going to be activated and you're just going to cry, you're just going to bawl your eyes out. Um, you know, maybe you're just going to stay in bed for a week. Whatever, whatever process you guys need to do, it's okay to just feel your feelings. You know, of course, if this goes on for too long and you feel like you can't get out of it, that's when you need to look for help. And, you know, you can look for help. However, whatever kind of help calls to you, that can be a typical, you know, Western doctor. It can be a psychiatrist. It can be a psychologist, a therapist, uh, an energy healer, a shaman, a sound healer, your bartender. You know, you can heal yourself doing energy work, you know, using guided meditations whatever whatever kind of help calls to you you'll know what path you guys need to walk if you need help like coming out of the hole you know building that ladder to get out of the pit if you feel like you're you stay in this fugue state for for too long or that you feel like you're too deep in it to get out of it you know make sure you get yourself the help you need to get out of it and you guys will you know you will i've been in those those deep pits you know where you feel like not only do you feel like you can't get out you feel like you almost don't don't want to get out because Maybe there's no point in getting out, but trust me, like this passes, this passes, it always passes, even if it takes longer than you think it should, you know, you can come out and see the sun again. Cause I, I want you guys to really remember that you are this crystal in the middle of the 10 of cups, all of like the trauma and the overwhelm and the anxiety and just the, the sense of it all being like, so, so, so too much is because you guys have been absorbing all of it. Almost like you've absorbing the all of the energy of all of humanity on the planet. Like you guys are the people who would probably like, you know, hear of a forest fire on the other side of the planet and just be like overwhelmed with grief. Like, you know, you don't want to live on this planet anymore because like how can these horrible things be happening? Um feeling so much pain and you know, you might not even be aware that it is it, it is these external things causing you your suffering and you know, like Astrological transits can even be triggering this. Sorry, guys, we keep getting interrupted. My cat keeps freaking out and she's like trying to destroy all of the blinds in my apartment, which I can't afford to replace. So um, was I talking about astrological transits? Uh, you guys, your your emotional state could absolutely be affected by the moon, the sun, what like time of year it is. You know, that can be just a level of how much sunshine you're getting or what sign the sun is in, what sign the moon in it is in, check other transits, check your transit chart. Um, if the sun is in your 12th house and it's Pisces season, you guys are going to be like exhausted, like for example, right? Um, the point is try to get more aware of what feelings are your own and which ones are actually external energies and you're just feeling them with your feelings because <sighs> So much is coming at you guys and you're taking in all of it and you need to become aware of what is yours and what isn't. And anything that's not your, that anything that isn't yours has to go. That's it. It has to go. And I'd like to pull two Oracle cards for you guys. One from the Moonology deck. Where is it? Oh, got it right here. Have faith in your dreams, waxing crescent moon. So beautiful, guys. With the four of swords, you guys are in that deep healing fugue state. And I think you guys know you're dreaming of a better way of being, of a better way of dealing with all of this uh, overwhelm. You guys are dreaming of a better world. And, you know, uh, look, at, look at this beautiful card in this field of flowers. The moon is waxing, you know, so it's on its way. You guys aren't going to stay in this dream, this dream dream state this fugue state for long these even are the same colors i love i love it you guys will you know wake up and find a better day and you'll be so much better equipped you'll be centered in yourself and you'll be better equipped to deal with all of this uh, all of these energies coming at you and you won't feel like a victim of them anymore you won't feel like they're like getting you and attacking you and 
oppressing you, you'll actually be able to work through them and use them to your advantage. You'll be able to use them as a creative spark. You'll be able to use them as a way of understanding the world. And I actually wasn't going to use this deck, the Starseed Oracle. I, I didn't, it's, it was in my drawer. I just had to pull it out. I didn't think I would want it for this reading, but I feel like it is really relevant to you guys. So, in fact, I feel like somebody might actually be called to buy this Starseed Oracle. I'll let you get a good look at it. It's on Amazon. You can get it everywhere. It's a mass, um, it's published by a big publisher, so it's easy to get. But it is like high quality, guys. This is one of the best decks <laughs> ever. It's, it's really new, too. I'm going to give this more of a shuffle. Messenger, serious energy, bringing harmony and balance. Wow, there we go. Look at this. If any of you resonate with Sirius the star or the Sirius star beings, you know, interdimensional beings from Sirius, this, you know, is possibly a synchronicity for you guys. But you don't even need to be looking at this from like a from a starseed perspective, you can just be looking at it for the meaning. Bringing harmony and balance. That is what you guys are going to be coming into. And because you guys like are the harmony, right? You guys are this crystal. As I keep coming back to that. And as you bring in all of these different energies from all these different directions, you're like the balance point, the center point. And that is why it's been so difficult for you guys to figure out how to find your center here because everything's coming at you from all over the place. But that is probably one of the things you guys came to earth to do. That's one of the things you're here doing is harmonizing all of these different strands of luminosity, all of these different flavors and, uh, you guys are creating, you're synthesizing, you're synthesizing something and you're going to be creating something all of your own. You just have to have faith in your dreams. Some of you are going to be receiving messages from Syrians in your dreams. Some of you. There you go, guys. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Stay strong while you, you know, while you go through this fugue state. And just, just always remember that you guys are the crystal at the, at the middle of the center of all of this. I love you guys. Hope to see you again soon. Hey, Pile 4. Welcome to your reading. You guys get this bonus armadillo card I'd like you to just look at for a sec. Clearly, we have, you know, Mayan pyramids in the background. The sun, the sun radiating over all, everything. These Mayan, I think they look like warriors of some sort. And this huge ass armadillo. And the caption is groundedness. I love the contrast between the sun and the ground, you know, like this, the sun being this, like these cosmic rays, you know, beating down upon the earth. And you're sort of this, like you're down here on the ground, but you're getting these in floods from the cosmos. And that is really what I'm seeing reflected up here. You got Princess of Swords, which is the Page of Swords, the Queen of Swords, and the Seven of Wands. And the Seven of Wands figure is almost like the key to this for me. She is standing on this hill and uh, she has, you know, shit to do. She's got to kind of stand her ground and fight a little bit of a battle. Or maybe she's, you know, looking back at a battle that she just fought. Either way, it's really similar to these guys. I don't know why these Mayans here, you know, have their spears. What, what are they ready to fight? Or maybe they're just... Maybe they're not in the middle of a battle right now, but they're always ready in case they need to, you know, defend their loved ones or defend their land. Um, there's just such a sense of like readiness here. And like you guys have two feet planted on the ground, but it's not like you guys are just like plodding, grounded, mundane, ho-hum people. 
because uh, you've also got this air energy up with these swords. And actually, when I flipped up all of these cards, I immediately felt like I was a tree, like with like deep, deep roots and with like my branches like way up in the wind. <laughs> so you guys are have like both ends. You were deeply grounded, deeply rooted into your like embodiments and into your whatever it is you're doing here on Earth, whether you have some major mission or project or if you're just like living your best life, whatever that is, you're really deeply invested in that. But you're also kind of have your head in the clouds, but not in a bad way, in a way that allows you to receive um, like cosmic information, cosmic data. So as for your guys's, you know, psychic powers, um, I'm really feeling two different things going on because you, you've, you've got this like, you know, a tree, right? <laughs> you guys are like a tree. That is the best metaphor I can think of here. Um, you know, the cosmic winds are blowing through your leaves. That is your claircognizant downloads. You guys are getting like data straight from the sun, straight from the sun. Um, and do you guys feel better on sunshiny days? I mean, like, I don't just mean like, you know, everybody kind of feels better when it's sunny, right? But do you guys like go out into the sun to like, just, just bathe in it? Or do you find that like, you know, when, when it's cloudy, you guys are like, you know, like maybe you even have sad, you know, seasonal, seasonal affective disorder. I think now they call it, you know, just depression with seasonal characteristics or something like that. Um, maybe you guys even have bipolar. Um, I have bipolar or rather I, I used to, um, ever since I had my awakening, I haven't had any more symptoms <laughs> came off my meds and now I'm like stable. So, I mean, that's a whole nother topic, but the point is if anybody's watching this has these like fluctuations in their energy and their moods that is like that's really reflected here but also that you guys really have the if you can just remember that you're a tree and like dig deep into your roots really focus on grounding like this armadillo then that's where you'll find your stability so that you know the cosmic winds blowing through the through the leaves like i can actually feel the wind like blowing through my hair like blowing through your crown chakra that is how you guys are getting getting your data you guys probably like to stand, so stand like, you know, on a, on a hilltop with your arms outstretched, you know, feeling the sun, feeling the wind. You guys like really elemental. You, you guys are definitely elemental. I mean, especially because, you know, we got air energy with the swords, fire energy with the wands, and then earth energy. Um, no water energy here. I don't feel like you guys are too overly emotional. It's not to say that you're not like that you guys can't, you know, be in your heart or you can't have feelings or any of that. That's just not, I don't think your heart chakra is like the seat of your psychic powers. <laughs> you guys are definitely more of like a higher chakras and then your root chakra. You guys are stretching out to both ends. So you guys know things. You're the queen of swords, um, paid princess of swords and queen of swords. Look, she is... <laughs> The lights are on guys her lights are on so you guys are really willing to take in almost any kind of information you were like really really curious you want to know everything and you sort of like bring it all in like without too much of a filter like at first right you're, you're willing to entertain almost anything you guys are like pretty pretty open-minded um but then queen of swords you then once you have all that information like brought in once you've brought it all in then you use your discernment and then you construct your own your own paradigms you guys are so independent especially in uh how you guys think like if you've been to been to university you guys probably really enjoyed that and got a lot out of it but you probably also thought that a lot of academics are full of shit and don't know what they're talking about because you guys can see like piercingly clear. You can see the truth. And that is partly because you're getting these these data downloads that you even if you lived your whole life without knowing where these ideas were coming from. Uh, they were coming. They were streaming down in. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, seven of wands, you guys uh, probably have some ideas that. People might be surprised. They might look at you and go, wow, you're like so rational. You're so logical. You're so put together, you know, but then you'll, the people will find out that you have some like really weird, uh, really quirky thing that you're into or belief. Like, for example, uh, maybe nobody knows that you guys are into tarot because that would be irrational, right? 
people will be like, that's not logical. How could you be doing that? That's completely irrational. But you, you actually see how everything is connected. You know, you know, you just know deep down in your bones um, that there is, you know, more to life than this, that there's more than what we can see. And you can sense things even when they don't make any sense, you know, you guys are probably really into science, but at the same time, you think that, uh, like you really put a lot of stock in, in science and you probably read scientific articles and follow different discoveries and whatnot, but you probably also see how limited, like, you know, early 21st century Western science is, you know, you guys are sitting on both sides of the fence. You can see the benefits to that kind of, uh, structured logical thinking. And you can also see uh, how it is also holding itself back. So you guys are, uh, I just heard the word diamonds in the rough. <laughs> um, you're really, you have a foot in the mundane, rational, scientific world and one foot in the spiritual, new agey, you know, mysticism type world and you take what you see to be true out of both of them and create your own world out of it and you guys even though you probably keep it to yourselves you're prepared to fight for not really fight for something but you're willing to defend yourselves you're not going to let people shit all over you just because you know they think you're being weird <laughs> Um, and, oh, and the other thing here is I've talked a lot about you, know, you guys are claircognizant, but uh, since there's this grounded fire energy, I think you also feel things in your body. Really getting that with this armadillo. Uh, you know, it could be as small as just feeling shivers um, or tingles when things, but you guys might also be feeling, um, oh, if you ever feel itchy, uh, uh, I know this for a few years. I thought I was like obsessed. I thought I had mites and I was always like picking at my skin because I felt like I was like craw like bugs were crawling all over me. Uh, this was like years ago before I like had <laughs> figured any of my shit out. And no, I didn't I didn't have mites. There was nothing wrong with my skin. I was manic. Like I was so manic. I was like deep in like psychotic mania. And uh, this is before I went on went on medication, went off medication. And now I know, OK, well, I mean, it, it's not just a mania. It, there's also the energetics there. Now I still get itchy sometimes uh, if I have like some like major, major like transform transformative energies coming in, um, feeling itchy. So if you guys have unexplained itches, you know, try to be non attached to that because there's nothing physically wrong with you. I mean, unless you clearly have a rash or something, but you know, if it's a, if it's a mystery itch, don't worry about it. Like it'll pass. And you guys might feel electricity running through your body. You might wake up at night feeling like amped, like just wake up 3 a.m. and just like jump out of bed feeling like there's literal electricity running through your body. Um, maybe you even feel like if you go like that, can you feel energy between your hands? Have you ever touched something and known something about it? And I feel like a lot of the energies you guys pick up on, it's not so much about individual people. It's more about picking up like ambient energies. Like you guys walk into a, walk into a building or walk into like an outdoor area and you feel the energy of the place. You're really connected to, to nature and just to like, you know, it can be a man-made location too, right? You're, you're connected to your environment, to your place. Maybe you guys even, have you ever seen or sensed like grid lines? Ever woken up in, in the night and like could have sworn you saw like purple lines like running around the ceiling or weird swirls? Stuff like that. I think you guys... Definitely, you guys are definitely claircognizant and you guys are definitely uh, experiencing sensations in your body. Um, and it is definitely, you guys are more attuned to picking up energies from, from nature and from places and from like big ambiances, like even picking up the energy of a crowd, but not so much from uh, specific individuals.
that's really what I'm getting here. And I'd just like to pull one more moon card for you guys. Show the world the real you, full moon in Aquarius. I love that it's Aquarius with that that air sign popping up. That goes so perfectly well with uh, the swords there. And exactly like I was saying, you guys are probably, you have these ideas about the way the world works that you have been keeping to yourselves. And maybe that's starting to gall. Maybe you're starting to feel like you shouldn't have to hide that you want to be the seven of, of wands. And actually look how the seven of wands is the third one here. This isn't necessarily like a past, present, future, but you know, in English we read left to right. And I think there's always a little bit of that energy. So you can be leaning into the seven of wands and energy, be prepared to stand up on top of your hill, you know, to declare your truth as you see it. And, you know, Hold your staff out and don't be afraid to defend yourself if even if whatever you have to say is unpopular. And this doesn't mean you have to go running around, you know, starting a, a social justice campaign and fighting for anything in particular. You know, you don't need to be obnoxious or like overly uh, like assertive about it or like aggressive about it. You can be assertive, just you know, you don't need to be overly aggressive about it. Just like when the opportunity arises, instead of like remaining silent, instead of uh, just, you know, smiling and nodding. You know, don't be afraid to just casually say what you think. Casually, whatever whatever weird idea you guys have uh, formulated for yourselves. Um, there's probably more people out there who have that same idea as you do. You just don't know it. And if nobody ever talks about it, then you, you'll never be able to connect with those people who are actually like you about there, out there. And, you know, full moon in Aquarius. Aquarius, you know, it makes me think of Uranus. Those are associated... So there's with Uranus and Aquarius is simultaneously that energy of individuation and connection because you can't have connection among individuals if you don't have individuals. <laughs> you know, Aquarius is always people really focus on it's like how it's like a collective and it's like a networking thing, but you can only have that if there are individuals. So for me, it's really also almost primarily an energy of individuation so that then you can network. I think that makes sense to you guys, even if that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. It's like you can't connect the dots if, and make a web out of the connected dots if there are no dots, <laughs> right? So if you guys want to find your tribe, you want to network with more like-minded people, you want to be able to talk about your weird ideas, um, don't be afraid to open your mouth and, and put it out there. Show the, world, show the world the real you. And that is how you will find your people. That is how you'll find your network. And I think that's it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon.